Hi, this is Savannah, and welcome to my basic ZBrush tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll discuss the ZBrush layout, an interface, and how to change it to better suit your needs. One of the first things I'd like to show you is a docking pallet or platform found on either side of your ZBrush program. You can open and close either document platform by clicking anywhere on this divider. You can dock any menu within ZBrush program to either platform. To dock a menu, click on the menu you wish to dock, click on this icon, and drag and drop your menu into either side. To remove a menu, Simply click on the same icon and drag and drop it on the open window within your ZBrush canvas. One of the other things you may notice is that my ZBrush interface probably looks quite a bit different than yours. One of the ways that I have changed that is I went to the Preferences menu and Eye Colors palette and change some of the attributes found within this palette. You can change many things from pop-up opacity to quick menu opacities, the title backgrounds, and the colors of the interface, the window, buttons, sliders, and text to anything that you feel most comfortable with. In order to change the colors within this palette, go over to your color palette, and as you can see here, you can change the colors to lighter or darker or stronger of any color within the rainbow. One of the other ways to change the colors is to click on one of the color boxes it will open up a bigger palette. You can then change the color to whatever you'd like it to be. Once you have the color you'd like, simply scroll off with your cursor and the palette will close. You can have two different colors within ZBrush open at the same time but only one box is active. To activate the other box, simply hit the switch color box. This will activate the other box in which you can change the color. You can also click on the box. That will activate the other box. To select the other one, simply click on it. Another way to change your colors is simply grab the square icon within the color palette and drag it anywhere on your ZBrush interface. You can even select colors from a texture or if you had a model or a background picture on your canvas, you can also select those colors. Once you have the color that you want selected, go back to your eye colors palette and click any of these buttons you wish to change to that color. Like that, as you can see, the ZBrush skin, or interface, has changed to a purple. I'm going to change it back. Once you're done, hit the Save UI Colors to save it anywhere on your computer so that you can load it into the palette at any point. It will save all the settings within this palette. 
One of the other things you may have noticed is that my buttons and sliders may be in different places than what you see for yours. The way to change or move your buttons is to go to the preferences menu, config palette or configuration palette, click on enable customize. Once that is on, holding and pressing, pressing and holding the command and option key for a Macintosh computer or control and alt key, you can click on the button and drag and drop it anywhere on your interface. You can also go to any menu and click on any button found within the, in the menu and drag and drop it to your interface. You can also do this with the sliders. If you do not want a button or a slider on your interface, holding down the same buttons, clicking on the button or slider, drag and drop into your window and your button will clear. Once you're done, hit the Enable Customize button again to turn it off. One of the other things that I've done is gone to the Mem or Memory palette within the Preferences menu and put the Document Undo and Tool Undo to about 20. This is the minimum amount of undos that the ZBrush program will allow. The document undo, for example, if I were to choose the simple brush from the 2.5B brushes and were to draw on the document and canvas and no longer wanted that brush, I'd simply go to edit and up here you can see undo. If you wanted the tool undo is if you were to have a 3D object that you have sculpted upon and you didn't want that line, go back to edit, tool, and undo. Now you can see that our sculpt has clear. You can also hit command or control Z to clear strokes or brushes off the canvas. And also, after turning off edit mode on a 3D object, Go to Layer and go to Clear, and that will clear your canvas. If you had the Simple Brush or any of the 2.5 brushes, then simply go to Layer and Clear. The differences between a 3D object and one of the 2.5 brushes, as you can see here, the 2.5D brushes are not edible. To clear the layer, you can also hit Control or Command N. One of the other things is you don't want to slide any either of the undos to too high of a number if you're going to have a high polygon count within your canvas. One of the reasons why is because it will slow down your ZBrush program depending on the computer and the amount of RAM or memory that you have on your computer. If you have a low polygon count on your 3D model, you may end up with more tool undos or document undos than just 20.
once you're done changing the attributes and your interface to whatever you feel is most comfortable for you, you can hit store config. When you hit the store configuration button, a pop-up will come up letting you know that it has been saved successfully and it will start up every time you start ZBrush. So your colors and your settings within the preferences and the UI will be saved for every time that you open up ZBrush. You can also save the UI to any part of your computer in which you can load it later if you want to use the standard or another interface layout that you created. If you make a mistake or wish to go back to the standard interface, click on in the configuration palette, Restore Standard UI. And as you can see, it restores it to the standard look. If you have a user or a custom layout and colors saved or stored, you can hit Restore Custom UI. And as you can see, it brings back my colors and button layout. It also will bring back any menus that I have docked on either side of ZBrush. One of the other things that I would like to show you is the canvas itself. As you can see here, the canvas has this gradient look to it and sometimes is very undesirable to be sculpting on. The ways to change that is to go to your document menu, go to the weight, drop that down to zero, also drop the center and range down to zero. As you can see, now it's one solid color. To change the background color, anything that you wish, simply change the color in your palette, go back to the document menu, and click on the back or document background color button. And as you can see, it changes your background of your canvas. You can choose any color you would like. One of the other things that you will notice is the W size button or auto fit window size that's on. What that tells ZBrush area is considered your window size. So it's excluding any of the main interface, interface sizes. You can turn that off and choose your own size Also, you'll notice that the Pro or Constrained Proportions button is turned on. What this does is changes or constrains the width to the height and vice versa. So anytime you change the height, the width would also be updated. But let's say you want to change your document to a square size. Simply turn off the Pro button and type in something along the lines of like 1024, 1024, and once done, just hit the resize button. It'll tell you in a pop-up that it's an undoable operation. Would you still like to resize this document? Hit yes. Right now, I'm going to hit no. Now, with the Pro back on and the width size on, one of the things that you'll also notice is that my canvas is quite small. To change this, simply go to the double button and hit yes. Once you do that, as you can see, it fits exactly 
within that window, excluding the interface. To save a document, simply click as Save As. Also, click Save As Startup Document. That, if you click on that, will open this document size with this background color and no gradient every time you restart ZBrush. One other thing that I would like to show that's pretty cool within ZBrush is if you were to hover over any button or slider and hit the command or control key, a pop-up will come up describing the function of that button or slider or any of the interface items including the items within the ZBrush menus. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you next time.